you, Lord. Lord. Lord Jesus, we bow down before you, Lord. Your name is above every other name, Lord. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The glory of God the Father in heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord and good morning, precious good morning. family of God. Good morning. Thank you so much for your beautiful prayers and your beautiful disposition in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and Mama Mary. Indeed, it is truly a great privilege to be among you. And I praise and thank God for this opportunity. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad Amen. in it. For the Lord's mercies are new every morning. Amen. And great is his faithfulness to us. Praise the Lord. Praise My precious brothers and sisters, as we close our eyes and, and sign ourselves with this, the cross of Jesus, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the unity prayer. My adorable Jesus, my, my adorable, adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May, may our, our feet, feet journey, journey, together. journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May, may our hands adore in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our hearts beat Heart in beat unison. In unison. May our souls be in harmony. May yes. our souls May our soul be in harmony. Be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May yes. our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly Penetrate each other. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together. May our May lips, lips pray, together pray together. together. To gain mercy. Mm -hmm. To gain mm -hmm. mercy. mercy. From the eternal Father. From the eternal Father. Amen. 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 Mary. Full of grace. Holy Mother of God, Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew. The face of the earth. We need you, Holy Spirit of God, that whatever we say today, whatever comes from your throne of grace, Lord, that you will be the one to speak to us. We make all our prayers as you cover us all with the fire of your Holy Spirit, our families and loved ones, and the precious blood of Jesus, and in the holy name of Jesus and Mama Mary, we make this prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, precious brothers and sisters. Praise it's so good to welcome you. And uh, today I just would like to share this beautiful aspect that is in our life, which always gives us something to hold on to. We generally, we generally say a stronghold is, you know, uh, a stronghold is like... Um, like in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, it says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they are. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. Okay, it goes on like that. But today, I would like to take the aspect of the stronghold of God. The stronghold of God, not the negative aspect of the stronghold, but the stronghold of God on our life. It is finding God's place of immunity. You know, immunity against sin, immunity against sickness, immunity against those whispering 
negative spirits and traitors that come to disturb us and our lives and the and and the lives of our loved ones, our families. So today we want to hold on to that, and we know for a fact that Jesus, by giving us His body and blood, has given us the greatest stronghold in Him. It is holding on to that body and blood, the very life of God that we receive at Holy Communion, that becomes this greatest strength in us. Then His Holy Word, the Word that we speak, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Father, the Word of God. So clinging on to that and the sacraments, the sacraments of Eucharist, of reconciliation, the sacraments of confirmation, the healing of the sick, the healing of the sick and all the other sacraments of holy order, matrimony. And it's so important that God and the Holy Father has also said, is, is there something else also? You know, it is to keep the environment clean. You know, the presence of God in our life through everything that we ever perceive. If we are in the Lord, we experience the stronghold of God in our life. And so, my precious brothers and sisters, from eternity to eternity, the eternal triune God and the main, and how can I forget our stronghold is in Mama Mary and the rosary that brings us closer to God, the divine mercy, the Ark of the Covenant, and, you know, the Ark that keeps us safe, the, the new Ark that keeps us safe, the divine mercy Ark, you know, and it's so important to hold on to that rosary, the weapon, these are the strongholds of God, my precious brothers and sisters, which I call finding God's place of immunity from the attacks of the enemy. And so from eternity to eternity, the eternal triune God has been our fortress, our refuge and our strength and surrounds us with his love and protection. We can see it from the very beginning, from Adam. Adam's obedience and faith in God and God and making him the father, the patriarch, the father of the father of many stars, the many stars in the sky. You know, so it's so important to know that how God was the stronghold. He left everything. He left everything just to follow the God, God who promised him everything. Come on. <laughs> Excuse me. God never, never breaks his promise. Sometimes we may not see his promises coming to pass. Like see Mother Mary, the angel Gabriel gave her so many promises. She did not see it happening, but she knew it will happen. She may not have seen it, but she knew, she believed. So that was the stronghold of God in her life. Her faith, her belief, her obedience. Like Abraham. You see, Moses, Moses, though he was a stammerer, though he had no courage and confidence to go before the people, God becomes his stronghold and, and gives him his, his power to do the needful of bringing his people out from Egypt into the promised land where he meets God in the burning bush and the entire exodus where we see in the in Exodus, we see that beautiful chapter. You know that the, if I'm, we see like how God was the, preceded them like a pillar of cloud to guide them, and a pillar of fire at night to show them the way, so that they could march day and night. God is with us through all these things and more through our prayer life, our holiness. Because without holiness, we are useless. We can go on muttering and muttering and praying and praying the rosary and praying the word of God. But if we are personally not in holiness, those things become like water on the duck's back. Because without holiness, we cannot see God. Without holiness, holiness is that power, that stronghold in our life, which keeps us close to God. That's why it's so important every day to wash ourselves with the blood of Jesus. 
-hmm. even while we are having a bath, from the top of our head to the tips of our toes, cleanse us with the blood of Jesus to ask repentance while we are washing, that our sins may be forgiven, and that we may get the Holy Spirit of God to make us holy. You know, there's one, one um, I would like to share with you one situation. When Mother Teresa was there, we were all youth. She would take us sometimes to the to the home for the dying, which is called Nirmal Ritai. And this home had people from the streets who were abandoned and left to die on the roads. And she would pick them up. And later, we would also phone the ambulance and pick them up and take them to the Nirmal Ritai. And there the people are almost dying and then she buries them according to their religion once they are dead. If they're Hindu, they take into the heart. If they're Muslim and Christians, they are buried. Like she never forced religion on anybody. In fact, she would tell the Hindu, you must be the best Hindu you can. Be holy. Pray to God. If you are a Muslim, be the best Muslim you can. Be holy to God. Love. Because wherever there is love, there is God. She would always say these things. So what I meant to say is, when we were very young and we would go to the Nirbal Nridai, the home for the time, you know, all those dirty clothes, we would be given surf and some uh, detergent and we would be given some uh, antiseptic liquid. Where we would take the brush and have to clean the dirt of those clothes of the dying people that were put onto them. Initially, it would be very difficult, my precious brothers and sisters. But Mother Teresa gave us the, the clue and the key of washing those clothes. She says, when you are washing those dirty, grimy clothes of the sick and the suffering and the dying, which is so obnoxious in its smell and dirty, she says, as you wash it and you take the brush and clean it, Keep saying, Jesus, as I clean and wash these clothes, clean and wash my spirit, my soul, my mind, my heart, all my sins, the sins of my generation, the sins of my family. Because it's so dirty. You know, it's so dirty. Physically, things are dirty. And we are, as we are washing it, we are crying out. And all of us, the group that we would go, we would pray like Mother Teresa used to teach us to pray and wash and you won't believe it after that. Each of us would be feeling as if we are flying. It was such a light feeling and the presence of God. I would always think when I went there and we would have mass there on Sundays. In fact, every morning, the the the, the hall was there, the bodies were there, the down, I mean the bodies of the sick people. There were different floors. Other floors were there also, but this down floor we would work in because that was the place where we used to do the work. And there was a stone over there, and that on that big brick stone, which was covered with cement and made into a stone, it was written, the body of Jesus. There was nothing on it. Why it was written, the body of Jesus? Was every, every uh, in, invalid uh, soul over there, person was there, was carried to that stone and was bathed every day. So each time we put that sick person on that stone and gave them a bath, that was the body of Jesus that we were cleaning. And we would clean the ladies one and some sisters, uh, there used to be men volunteers also, we would give bath to the gents. And we, it's a low stone and a stool, we put them there and bathe them. So this is the thing. So, you know, when we, this is basically God becoming a stronghold in our life when we serve the poor. There were instances also uh, where we would be having street work. Where we would be having street work. We would go, and the street work was in uh, the contemplative house of the MC sisters. It was situated in the St. John's Parish grounds. And behind the church was a cemetery. And there was a huge uh, house where, you know, there was a tap that would be filled with water. And yeah. the rain station, Sialda Radio. So we would take stretchers and wheelchairs and go into the stations. And we would be going to look for Jesus. We would see, we are going to pick up Jesus. And you know, those who would be lying on the railway stations of Sialda, 
those who couldn't walk we would put them in stretchers and bring them to the cemetery those uh, who were in, couldn't walk in the wheelchairs others we would assist them with their sticks and all other kind of people even even those who were in drugs they would be lying there days smelling out for the count we would even carry them and bring them into the cemetery space in the cemetery where we had a big uh, cemented house you know where we used to fill up the water there and we would be begging for clothes and other things we'd buy soap and all that and we make chili in one side you know rice and dal and potato vegetables in it one group would be doing that one group would be going to collect the patients jesus actually collect jesus and one group would be there waiting to give them a bath one group would be there to cut the nails and cut the hair and to dress them and so this became god's stronghold in our life because the dirtier they were our memories and hail marys would become louder you'd be giving them a bath and you will say hail mary we start hail mary for the grace and the smell the dirty the smell the more sticky the hair the more dirty their nails the hail mary would go louder hail mary for the grace and hail mary hail mary for the grace we would pray in bengali because most of all most of us were there there we were working with the bengali ladies being the bengal and the memories and that would become a stronghold of god in our life keep us pure and holy and sin because that was the body of jesus lately father sam in our emmaus retreat center said going for communion every day is wonderful definitely it's a day of grace but it only becomes complete when you become that communion it only becomes complete when your body is broken like jesus body was on the cross because that is our stronghold the eucharistic lord and the cross crucifixion death of our lord the wounds of our lord jesus the blood of our lord jesus and so when we clean the bodies of these people when we wash them even in the cemetery and this after they are cleaned we will be cutting their nails cutting their hair putting on fresh clothes making them sit and feeding them the garam garam hot hot khichdi and then sending them off on their way some had to be dropped back on stretcher than we would chase some just went away so this would happen once a month and mother trees are always said if you want to cleanse your soul do this work befriend them help them and i can tell you we were as light as a feather full of joy we would laugh and be full of joy and the joy in the inexplicable presence of god would come upon us <clears throat> so my precious brothers and sisters these are the examples that i have experienced personally with mother trees and she being my neighbor and i being in her lay mc lay missionaries of canada so this is why i want to share with you we even see joshua how god was with him and gave him the inspiration for that wall to come down how the people gathered together and they went around the wall of jericho shouting praises and praying to the lord god became their stronghold as their enemies came crumbling down in the same way when we shout praises and when we pray when we sing and we proclaim the word of god in holiness the walls in our life come down the problems in our life come down praise is a place where we bring down the negative strongholds while god becomes stronghold of our life the immunity from the attacks of the enemy and we bring down strongholds and divisions and many things in true worship not just going on hallelujah and that but why we are like how beautifully when you are praying in tongues it's coming from the depths of your heart someone is singing someone's reading the word someone is all of you are praying you know, this is it the worship of unity together you know and this is where strongholds are broken because we don't know what we are saying but the spirit of god the gift of tongues bring down the power of the holy spirit to break strong holds in our life while god comes to strong hold of our life the gift of the tongue is the holy spirit of god and so we see also hezekiah his prayer which he begged god to give him the extension of life god became his strong hold that's why 
we say finding God's place of immunity from the attacks of the enemy in our sicknesses and against whispering prayers. Yes, God became a stronghold in Hezekiah's life and extended his life 15 years more. And we see how wonderfully Yahweh is always with them in Israel when they were walking to Egypt to go into the promised land, feeding them with manna, providing all their needs so that they would not be in want in spite of their unfaithfulness to them. God in the desert. God never left them. And God said, I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I will be with you until the end of the age. Yes, that is the stronghold we have in God. We see in Daniel's book, we see Shadak, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were in that fire, God became their stronghold. And they saw the fourth person moving in the fire. God came to save them. Maybe it was the angel, maybe it was God himself, but the presence of his, his presence physically was there. Even while the fire burned, it never consumed them. God became the stronghold. And then we see in the life of Paul, in Paul, many sufferings he was he went through, the beatings he went through, the, the problems he went through, the persecutions he went through. The Lord, but yet he hung on to God. Even though God gave him a thorn in the flesh, he believed that God's grace was sufficient for him. God never took it away from him. Sometimes we face situations in our life. God does not take but he gives us the grace to bear it for some reason or the other. Maybe pains in our body, maybe certain difficulties that we have to face, inhibitions and things like that. But God is with us through it all. He is our stronghold. See, Paul and Silas, when they prayed and we worshipped God in unity, the chains fell off, the doors opened wide, and even others got saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You and your family will be saved, he tells those soldiers. And then, there's so many instances of God saved Noah and the Noah's ark. Yes, my precious brothers and sisters, the stronghold of God in our life is the most important thing. Yes, God is our stronghold. Praise the Lord. And so, the Bible tells us of, uh, of a time when Satan shall be cast down to the earth, he will come having great anger and wrath, knowing that he is only a short time here. We see this in Revelation 12, verses 12. It shows us that he comes with great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. That's why he's working overtime. He has the zeal to finish us up. But God is our stronghold against our enemies and whispering traitors. While some Christians question whether the church will be the victim of such hellish warfare, it is obvious even in our world today, my brothers and sisters, that the magnitude of evil has escalated. And we all agree with that. What is our response? Has God provided us equivalent to the ark? Has he provided Noah? Yes, I just mentioned it. Thank God for our Catholic Church, for the Eucharist, for the sacraments, for the rosary, the word of God, for the, for the, the, the Catholic essence in our life. That is what we know, that we can dwell in safety during these days. We believe the answer to these questions, yes, God has provided us spiritual protection for each one who believes, a stronghold where our souls can always find a safe harbor. When we speak of a stronghold, we do not mean that we will escape suffering, persecutions, or even death for Jesus' sake, martyrdom. For all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. 2 Timothy 3.12 Sister Jairani, can you can you please read that? 2 Timothy, yes. 2 Timothy 3, verses 12. Yes. In the all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. It's good to remember this. Sometimes we wonder why we are going through so many pains and troubles. But you know, the more closer we are to God, the more suffering and persecution we face. But there is a peace that passes understanding that keeps our hearts in tune with God in peace. We can always smile. With Jesus in the boat, we can smile at the storm. You know, that little song. Can I sing it with you? Yes, yes. With Jesus in the boat, we can smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. You know it? Smile at the storm. With Jesus in the boat, we can smile at the storm as we go sailing home. Let's sing. Sailing, sailing home. Sailing, sailing home. As we go sailing home. Yes, my brothers and sisters. With Jesus in the boat, in our boat of life, in our soul. We can smile at the storm. There's going to be waves. There's going to be waves bashing us. And our boat is going to be this way, that way. But we hold on to Jesus. We hold on to the faith of Jesus, our stronghold. And we will smile at the storm, knowing that he who is in us is stronger than he who is in the world. 1 John 4, 4 tells us, Jesus who is in us is stronger than he who is in the world. And Jesus is in us. We can smile at the storm. You know what Mother Teresa says? What Mother Teresa told us? Every time, every time we are faced with suffering and we think we are alone, remember that Jesus is bending his head down from the crucifix to give you a kiss. Every suffering is a kiss from the crucified Lord and Savior. There's no greater love than his. Whenever we would go to Mother House and sometimes partake of Mother Teresa when she was there in the afternoons for the Patients of the Cross, every afternoon at 2 30 before the Divine Mercy, a uh, short prayers, just one line, uh, Patients of the Cross, but do it every day. It's so powerful. It keeps us, humbles our souls and keeps us pure, protects us. It becomes a stronghold, the Patients of the Cross. And at the at the point of the time when it comes, Jesus is crucified on the cross, and we all used to kneel down with her. I can just see a bent body with sari bending as we all bend with her. She would sing this little song in her in a husky voice. She would say, "No greater love, no greater love." There is no greater love, no can there be. His crucified love, His crucified love, the love which took Him to Calvary. I tell you, that moment in time is an unforgettable moment. Teresa, she would sing that song and we would sing it with her at the crucifixion and death of our Lord. Just one line prayers with just one meditation shot. And that became a stronghold in our life. An immunity against our enemy of youth, of pride, of selfishness, of knowing that the crucified body of Jesus can become our body too because we receive him every day body and blood which is crucified and lifted up for you and me. So my precious brothers and sisters, it is so important to know these things that what we are doing, just not let's do it habitually, but let us take the essence of it out so it becomes the stronghold of God in our life against our raging enemies. You know, every moment we have him, our God with us, but at the same time, we have the enemy who's over time working with zeal to destroy us and our families. We have to be in prayer. Maybe we are not praying while we are while we are working. But let us offer that prayer as our sacrifice to God. 
we work as if we're working unto God. We do our best, whether we are seen or not seen, whether we are praised or not praised. We work unto God for His glory, so that He becomes the stronghold of God in our life against our enemy, the immunity against Satan coming against us in any way. So, do we expect to find a place where we are so spiritual that the world finally loves us? Yes. Let's read John 15, 18 and 19. Sister, please read it, sister. John 15, 18 and 19. John 15. Verses 18 and 19. Yes, yes. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. Because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Amen. 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 So, that's why we are persecuted. That's why there is spiritual jealousy. That's why people come against us. You know, because the world and its ways are fading away, but the zeal of the evil one is escalating to destroy us. So he, you know, he cannot come to us in person. He comes to us through people who have their weaknesses, who have their downfalls. That's why in Ephesians 6, we see that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces in the heavenly places, against principalities and all that stuff. Because we know that if anyone is coming against us, trying to bring us down, to humiliate us, to persecute us, to destroy us, it is not that person. It is the evil one working in through that person who has that weakness. And therefore the world will hate us because we belong to God and we are living a holy life. We are projecting the love of God by Satanist hatred and anger and dissension. Jesus is unity and love and peace. So if they hated Jesus, definitely they will hate us. The stronghold of God is the shelter of God, the dwelling of eternal life. The Lord has provided for our souls. That's why Psalm 91 says, We who dwell in the shelter of the Most High God and abide under the shadow of the Almighty can say to the Lord, Our refuge and our fortress are God in whom we trust. For he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover us with his pinions and he will protect us under the shadow of his wings. Yes, my sisters and brothers, our dwelling place, we have to abide with him 24-7. We have to talk with Jesus. We have to walk with Jesus. We have to work with Jesus. We have to think with Jesus. We have to live and move and have our being in him. Once we have found this place, nothing we encounter in life can defeat us. God himself will preserve us in all things, in every distress of devilish plots set against us. We, as the children of God, the children of light, children living in holiness under the shelter of the Most High God, we emerge the better for it. We emerge better for it. It is the redemptive power of Jesus Christ reversing the plans of Satan and annulling the effects of death in our lives. Although you and I may be in a place of fear and sin at times sometimes, or emotional defeat, or the world at large, yours and mine, the current that runs through us is the Holy Spirit. You know, one more thing comes to my mind of Mother Teresa. She said, how can electricity come on until and unless you do not switch it on? You have to go to the switch to switch it on, then the light comes on. So simple was her teaching. So unless we do not connect to that electricity and stay connected to that current, the current can go off in our life. So we have to come to that place where that current is always going to keep ourselves entwined with those wires. The wire that entwines us, that Wi-Fi connection of God in heaven. 24-7 because he's watching us all the time. He is with us all the time. He lives in us all the time. His spirit is in us all the time. So why aren't we consciously supernaturally connected to him? As we switch on the light, 
Let the light come on always stay bright in us. In uh, Psalm 119, says, Oh God, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When the word of God takes flesh in us, the light comes into our life and shows us the path, the word of God, which is our deepest problem after the Eucharist and the suffering also. The word of God. So we come into that place and your current and my current condition in the current of the Holy Spirit becomes the powerhouse for us. From where you and I can reach the stronghold of God every moment of our life, in every condition, ups and downs, knowing that it will never leave us in the Yes, my precious brothers and sisters, it is so important to know and to know and to know that God is always with us. You see, as for you also, we see this in Zechariah 9. Sister, can you read Zechariah chapter 9? Yes. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. Yes. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Today he is, he is requesting us. Come back. Come back. Return to me. Return to me. Because of the blood of my covenant with you. I have set your prisoners free. He has set our very being free. The redemptive power of his blood. That he wounded on the cross for us. He nailed our sins to the cross. He was crucified for us. By his wounds we are healed. He says, return to the stronghold. O prisoner who have the hope. This very day I'm declaring that I am restored double to you. Praise the Lord. Yes, our God wants to restore double to us. He wants us to remain in him so that he can give us victory every step of our way. God preserves us in all things, my precious brothers and sisters. He is our stronghold in all things. We see in Psalm 41 2. Psalm 41 2. The Lord will protect him and keep him alive, and he shall be called blessed upon the earth, and do not give him over to the desires of his enemies. Yes, my precious sisters and brothers, this is exactly what the Lord does. He protects us and keeps us alive in our famine, in our destructions, in the in the sins and the, the enemies of this world. He keeps us in his the palm of his hand, in the hollow of his hand. And he keeps us safe from the desires of our enemies. On us. The blessed life does not come apart from caring for the weak. Here King David is weak and needy and he needs God's blessing. That is why he cries us cries out and says, Lord, protect him and protect me and keep me alive. Keep me. Yes, Lord, may Lord protect us and keep us alive in every situation that we face so that we can become more than conquerors to the stronghold we have in God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Even Psalm 121, it's such a beautiful psalm. It is where God becomes our stronghold. He keeps us right, which means you and me. And he who is our God will neither slumber nor sleep. Our God watches over us all the time. He does not get tired of watching over us and weary. This is how we learn to trust God who helps us. God invites you and me today to trust in him, our stronghold in time of trouble. That's why he gave us the divine mercy. And we say, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Psalm 121, if we read every day, we get that comfort, we get that strength. We lift up our eyes to the hills from where our help comes. He is our stronghold. He will protect us. That is why we hold on to God's word. And can we read uh, Psalm 25, verses 20, sister? Please. Yes. Psalm 25, verses 20. Oh God, my life, and deliver me. Do not let me be put to 
to shame for I take refuge in you. Amen. Amen. I take refuge in you. Jehovah, I take comfort in you. You alone are God, my deliverer. In the shelter of your wings, I hide. I take refuge in you. Jehovah, I take comfort in you. You alone are God, my deliverer. In the shelter of your wings, I hide. Yes. He hides in the shelter of his wings. He guards our souls and he delivers us. For we take refuge in him. He, he upholds us victoriously by his glorious right arm of justice and never lets us be shamed. Even if we go to the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil because he is there with his crook and his staff to give us comfort. We need not fear. We need not fear to be shamed or to do anything because he is our shepherd who will lead us and guide us to pastures green. With his, with, his, with his staff, he will take us through. He'll hold our hand. You know, it's so beautiful, you know, that I one picture comes to me um, I I used to be we used to be in the in the renewal and very young uh, youngsters you know I don't think I was married then but uh, there was Father Lobo you know his brother is uh, another Lobo who is in Bombay he still does inner healing Anthony Lobo his father uh, his brother was another Lobo I forget his first name he was a Redemptorist priest and uh, uh, he used to take us to inner healing you know. So one day I went to him, how God became a stronghold in my life in this in healing retreat. You know, and when I went to him for counseling, he recognized that there were wounds I received in my mother's womb. Wounds received in my mother's womb. That's why there were certain things that I used to do and behave as a youngster. Like it, you know, I would not understand. And very often it would lead me into, you know, sinful, sinful ways. And so when I went for this counseling session, Father took me through a inner healing process. And as he took me to that inner healing process, you know, bringing Jesus back to the power of the Holy Spirit into the womb of my mother, where I was just conceived. And every month growing in secret when my mother even never knew then, before two months, three months, Sometimes it's difficult to know that one is pregnant. But God knew my unformed substance. Psalm 139. And all the days allotted to me was already planned. Like it for you too. And you know we could not hide from his presence. We were intuitively woven in our mother's womb. God saw that structure. And he saw every step of the way. How we were influenced by our mother's movements. Our mother's behavior. Our mother's negativities. Our mother's positivities. And, you know, there were situations probably in that womb experience of my mother, which affected me a lot. And it was through this inner healing process that God became the stronghold of my life and he delivered me from my enemies, which I received negatively from the in umbilical cord, which made me do certain, doing certain things as a teenager, which I could not understand. Of course, after that, I was healed. But while this happened, my brothers and sisters, I was slain in the spirit. I won't say I, I was, uh, I was really slain in the spirit when Father was praying. Like I was out for a couple of minutes and I never knew where I was. I was like dead to the world. And in those moments, it seemed like the like a long nine months from Father's home. You know what I saw before me? As I loved the psalm, I lift my eyes to the mountain. I saw a huge mountain. And you know where I was? I was in a have a sack, you know, uh, uh, you know these women who carry their babies. Some carry it in the front and some carry it in the back. I was a baby tied on to the back of Jesus. Okay. I was a baby, a small baby with my legs and hands out of that bag and my body was crushed to the back of Jesus. And I was there, a baby. And I felt the Lord's body on my body as a baby. 
and in front of him was a staff and he had a bag which had milk and things which the baby needed and he was walking up and walking up and walking up and i could feel the vibration of like someone walking in that baby you know the beat the vibration and today i can remember day i can say that probably was the negative vibes and things that i received from my mother in her movements she was rectifying in that slain spirit i was in line you all are the charismatic renewal so i know this language won't seem strange to you and i really literally felt jesus taking me up and up and up and i could feel the staff going because my intelligence of a grown up person you know and then finally he comes to the plain of the mountain he takes out the map and he keeps me on his lap and he keeps me with the bottle from that bag and i am cooing and i'm so happy and i'm so blessed and i'm and i'm giggling and gurgling and my i come back i come back i had a beautiful vision of an inner healing experience and i came back i was crying with joy and father prayed over me blessed me and gave me points how to you know continue this experience but that jesus became a small hold in my life you know and after that i realized all those negative things which i used to do and could not imagine why i did those things but just disappeared from my life just disappeared from my life and one thing else i can share with you is that i could never do anything straight if i touch something from my hand if i went to the kitchen to do something a fish would fall from my hand i would always be falling and cutting myself and breaking things and i was like a tomboy and this i was healed of completely later i got to know one of the things that was negative i was a second child and my mother and father always wanted a boy always wanted a boy and so that they they, they you know programmed their mind and it was such a negative thing that jesus made me a girl and so when i was born i was a girl and and the disappointment was in my mother and father so they loved me after that but the damage was done in the womb you know but i was healed of it the god became my strong hold it became an immunity against my enemy and i was made free and i was able to grow up like a beautiful girl you know very gentle loving kind all those aggressiveness and you know i used to wonder why i am like this you know so anyway that was a great thing i ever did it's a psalm 139 it's so beautiful where can we hide from his presence we went into the depths of the earth you see when ever he was here he's on the top he's in the bottom he's on the left he's on the right he's circling us everywhere so let us come back genesis 28:15 he tells us i am with you i will keep you wherever you go yes he was with me on the time in my mother's conception your conception with your mother's womb each of us were in our mother's just like jesus was in the womb of mother mary and we were all in the wombs of our parents and our children were in our womb and we are here and we are gone tomorrow but he is here with us now and forever even after we die he will be with us in eternity to eternity that's why genesis 28:15 says i am with you and will keep you wherever you go praise the lord because of those healings i know that the lord kept me and saved me from many other things that could have destroyed me an inner healing experience of jesus literally taking me in his arms and loving me and healing me this is what inner healing retreats actually do for us there were many instances i can tell you but this is one of the main things that i received so there's a sense of god's watchfulness my brothers and sisters and his protection a promise that no matter whatever happens whatever 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 happens love stands guard over us in the present in the future and he was there in the past 
He saw our tears. He collected our tears in his bottle. He knows our past. Before we were conceived in the womb of our mother, we were first conceived in the mind of God. On the foundation of the world, we were there with him from the beginning. He keeps Israel forevermore. He will keep us from all evil. He will keep our life. The Lord will keep our going out and our coming in from this day forth and forevermore. God keeping us doesn't mean that we will never suffer, my precious brothers and sisters. It does not mean though, that evil and suffering and danger and heartache will not have the final word. But finally, and finally, God will have the final say if we remain in him. That's why so beautifully in Romans 8, 38 and 39, it says, Nothing separates us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. We do not let sufferings, persecutions, trials, or thought, or doubt, or anything separate us from the love of God and the presence of God in us. Can you reassure us, Sister Jairani, please, that Romans 8, 38, 39, where we see the love of God which is our stronghold. Can you please read it for us? It's Romans 8. Sure. Yes. For I am convinced that this mic is making a lot of noise. Sister Shelley, can you just mute your mic? Sister Shelley is there. Cheryl, I think, Sister Cheryl. Thank you, Sister. Let me say. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor past, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, this is the love of God which is our stronghold. To be convinced that God loves us no matter what. God loves us. And thanks be to the Holy Spirit of God who lives in us. And he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He is the one who helps us to fight. He is the one who helps us to overcome. Because he who is in us is stronger than that which is in the world. Praise the Lord. And so we see in Psalm 66, 9, who keeps us in life and does not allow our feet to slip. Yes, if we are in the word of God, his word will keep us. If we are in the Eucharist, the Lord whose body and blood mingles with us will keep us. And that is why we see David turns to God in persecution and prayer in Psalm 144. He cries and confines of a slandered soul. David, a fugitive escaping from Saul, cries out to God. Psalm 144. Psalm 140, verses 4. Sister, please read it, this portion where David cries out to God. He has been slandered. He is like a fugitive. He is running away from Saul. There are many times in our life that when we are disgraced, we are slandered. We are, we, people talk about us. Most of it is wrong. We are and people love to gossip. But we have a God who we cry out to you to protect us, to keep us safe from the slandering mouth. And that we are escaping from Saul, we are escaping from things which can get us down. Yes, sister, please read Psalm 140, verses 4. Sure, sister. Guard me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent who have planned my downfall. Amen. Amen. I have it here. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purposed to trip up my feet. They lay snares for me to catch me in the net, but my God is my deliverer and he will protect me from the snares of the enemy. Isn't that Psalm beautiful? Psalm 16 one says, one six, Psalm 16 verses 1 says, preserve me O God and you do I put my trust. Put a hedge of protection around me and my family, my children, my grandchildren, loved ones. Put a hedge of protection, a wall of protection. Guard me and our loved ones and keep us, obs observe our every move, our coming and going. God is our safest refuge. 
You know, he's our safest refuge and we hide in him. You are my, what's that song? You are my refuge. You are my, place. you are my hiding place. You are my need. You are my God. Yeah. And I will worship you with all of my heart. And I will worship Let's sing it. you with all of my strength. And I will worship you with all of my You are my refuge. You are my refuge. You are my friend in me. You are my Lord. And I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you with all of my strength. I will worship you because you are my you are my fortress, you are my strong tower, and you are my stronghold of God. I will worship you. You are my friend, you're my God, you're my refuge, you're my fortress, you're my stronghold, and I will hold on to you, Lord, in my weaknesses, in my forgetfulness, in whatever things that are not of you, Lord. You are the immunity against that evil one. You are the immunity. That's why we say this prayer, which Father Jim Blonde tells us. He says, When we say this prayer, Satan gets blinded from our, us because we're literally asking Jesus to walk with us, to work with us, to think with us, to heartbeat with us, to remain in our soul, to hear with us, to see with us, to speak with us, and to be with us. When we are one with Jesus, nothing can ever come against us. Amen. If we are for Jesus, nothing can come against us. Praise the Lord. So trusting in God's protection. That's why we say Psalm 27. Sister, please read. Please read, sister. Psalm 27, 1 to 3. The Lord is my light. Yes, please read it, sister. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil doers assire me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. Amen. Amen. So this is the psalm which really we, we need to remember and say every day. Yes, the Lord is my light and my salvation, my rock and my deliverer. No, no, no. That he is our shield and our stronghold. Yes. The Lord is described as our light, emphasizing his role in leading us through his life's challenges and uncertainties. He is our rock, our fortress, our stronghold. As light, he, is, he gives us a salvation. God reveals the path we should follow. He helps us navigate difficult situations and offers hope in the midst of despair. Yes, my precious brothers and sisters, this is such a beautiful way to know that God will never leave us and never forsake us. He is a God who will always remain with us now and forever. We, The desolate can always find God. No matter whatever happens, we can never be alone if we walk and live and move and have our being in him. There is that song, the Lord is my light and the rock of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and the rock of my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? I offer unto you a sacrifice. I offer unto you my praise. For he has delivered me from my enemies. In him will I rejoice forever. 
Yes. And with this, my precious brothers and sisters, I ask Sister Jai Rani to repeat one line and we repeat it with him, Psalm 27, 1 to 3. And we make this our closing prayer and we hold on to the stronghold, the rock of our salvation, our stronghold, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and God and Savior, who we love and we worship and we adore. And there's no one like him. And we just hold on to Jesus, our love, the love of our life. And we ask him to be with us now and always, not only with us, but with each and every family member, with our loved ones, those who have asked for our prayers, those we ought to pray for. We worship and praise and adore and power on with all the angels and saints of God, as we know he is our God, our stronghold, our life and forever. We love him. Yes, sister, please pray that as we repeat after you one line at a time. Thank you, sister. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and my, and salvation. my salvation. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom is. shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. The Lord is the stronghold of is my the life. stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil doers assail me, when evil doers assail me, to devour my flesh, to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. They shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. My heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. Yet I will be confident. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It goes on to say, One thing I ask of the Lord, and that do I seek, that I may dwell in the presence of the Lord all the days of my life, and that I may inquire in his temple. Yes, and taste and see how sweet his presence is. We remain in the presence of the Lord, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us as we leave to do our own work today. Let us be one in spirit, so that the Spirit of God may be descended upon us. But where there is unity and love and mercy and forgiveness, the Spirit of God hovers over us. We make all our prayers to the intercession of Mama Mary, all the angels and saints of God and holy souls, and to the most holy and the powerful and the matchless and the magnificent name above all names, the name of Jesus, our Lord, God, and Savior. And we all say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.